So self-editing a manuscript is an interesting question because it, it, it comes down to the question of what kind of editing you want to do when you consider self-editing. Um, my personal process is to copy edit, for instance, as I go. Um, if I'm working on one or more projects and sometimes I have to switch back and forth between them, the, ne the first thing I do when I sit down to work on something is read the last chapter or the last what I wrote the day before or however much I can make the time to read. As part of doing that, you do the basic copy editing. You'll notice if you made a weird typo, if you used the wrong name, or little simple things like that. So there's a great deal of writing advice out there that says don't edit until you've finished your first draft, but copy editing isn't really that kind of editing. Um, it's also very useful for getting you, yourself back in the flow of what you were working on. Uh, for larger structural editing, I would say you want to wait until the end, or until it's very, very obvious that something is broken. Um, if you're concerned about the structure of the book that you're writing. So for instance, you've been writing for a few weeks, you feel like maybe you're at halfway and the end is only getting further away. Then maybe it's time to take a pause and you know s sketch out an outline and say, where did I go wrong that I don't know where to go next? Um, if you're worried about uh, you know, mid-level things like character interactions or does this scene, you know, for instance, if you say, I need this scene, I know I need this scene, but I don't know if it belongs here then make yourself a note and keep going. Um, one of two things will happen. You'll either realize later in the book that it needs to be there instead of where you put it the first time and you can change it, or you'll get to the end and that may be a clue that you didn't need to worry about it in the first place. Um, the, the larger issue of, of larger editing is very easy to think about. It's, it's much easier to edit something that's finished. So if you're doing any kind of structural editing, anything that's developmental or a more rigorous line edit or something to say, not are the words right on the page, but is the story or the book structured correctly? Wait until the end for that. Um, you know, it's the, it's uh, to make another carpentry reference, you can work from your plans or you can wing it. But if you wing it, your bookcase is gonna lean. So work from, work from your plans, get to the end and then do the big structural rewrites if necessary. Uh, so tools for editing is kind of a Pandora's box. Um, it's a question of, again, what kind of editing that you're doing and whether you feel the tools are gonna to be useful. Um, the one that most everyone uses is the spell checker in Microsoft Word and the grammar checker in Microsoft Word. The spell checker and the grammar checker are very, very smart, very, very dumb machines. They catch everything, even if you intend it to be that way. So I've worked with a lot of writers over the years who said, I don't need this book to be edited. I, I just ran the spell check and accepted all the changes. And I tell them, you should probably go back and read that book again to make sure. Um, the automated tools for, the basic automated tools like those that come in word processors are very good at catching typos. They're very bad at grammar. They're very bad at sentence fragments. They're very bad at what we generally consider style. Uh, if you choose to, to write with a lot of single paragraph sentences, that confuses word very much. If you like to use a lot of em dashes, that confuses word very much. Um, for larger issues though, there are a couple, uh, what I guess would be called third party tools, things like Grammarly um, and tools like that, that are a bit more rigorous and a bit more programmable that are, that are useful if you're using them for the right things. Um, it's important whenever you're looking at any tool for writing to understand before you start what its limitations are. I think that's the greatest danger that most writers fall into.